Kiara and I would be out at somewhere and she'd turn around to me, she goes, oh, are you all right? You know, why don't you come and talk to this person? And I'd snap and lose it. And I'd end up like just arguing at her, fighting and then walking out the door. And we'd be like, say, probably five k's away from our house, I'd walk home in the in the pouring rain, just losing it. Just had no direction, didn't know who I was. I actually fallen so far that I just didn't know who I was anymore. Homeless, living on the streets in the city, um, with my family being at a point where they no longer were willing to see me or let me near the family home. I've reached a point of desperation for money where I'm weighing up options now of things like prostitution and working in a brothel because of the lengths that you need to go to to um, feed that habit. I'm diagnosed with anorexia nervosa. I still get hungry. It's almost like I'm not allowed to eat from that part of my, that voice in my head that tells me that I need to restrict. And I think that's definitely what's happened to me is my body and brain have just conditioned into it. So now I look back at what I ate when I was 12 and it seems like mountains and mountains of food. Emotional dysfunction. We hear this term a lot, but what does it really mean? Another name for it, and one that carries a greater stigma, is mental illness. Something that even now, in the 21st century, none of us like to talk about. In Australia, it's estimated that 45% of people will experience a mental health condition in their lifetime. In any one year, around 1 million Australian adults have depression, and over 2 million have anxiety disorder. Body image issues, anxiety issues, depression, and just lack of self-confidence within girls has increased dramatically over the past few years. If I had more of a holistic view of health early on, then I, it would have saved a lot of time and a lot of damage. At present, the traditional model of treatment for a mental illness includes psychological therapy, medication and community support programs. But less well known are the alternative therapies claiming to change the brain, such as neurofeedback, hypnotherapy and the positive auditory stimuli method. It is a technique that I developed nearly 13 years ago to help people who were suffering from severe mental illnesses and things like anxiety and depression. It works by aiming to interact with the unconscious brain. It seeks to allow the brain to heal and become more happy and joyful. And we think it's a great alternative to the traditional therapies. So how about a world where the way forward is straightforward? Where we could reduce the symptoms of mental disorder, not by medicating, but by learning how to change our brains. Could it be as simple as that? What we're going to do is take three people that are in emotional and psychological crisis. We're going to follow their life's journey over the next two months and just see whether a natural alternative technique is going to be beneficial to help them in their recovery. Look, wholeheartedly, I want to give this a go. Anything to stop taking medication to make me feel better, like, I'm 100% in. We're all seeking the way to our own peace and happiness. For some, particularly those with a mental illness, this journey is fraught with good and bad choices. While they're deciding which way to go, how do they cope with a label that none of us really wants to talk about?